Hello, wonderful people. This is Ting Thing with Platform Builder. Welcome to this uh, moderately quick tutorial. We are covering some advanced things today. I want to talk about commands and about the timeline. If you are not familiar with uh, the basics of Platform Builder, I would encourage you to get familiar with it before we dive into this stuff, which is a little more complex, uh, but it's very powerful and very useful for you. So I'm excited to introduce this to you. Uh, commands were introduced in Platform Builder 5. I'm using 5.1, and um, we're going to get right into this. So I want to show you just a little level that we have. This is where we're going to uh, mess around with commands. A command in Platform Builder uh, is something you tell Platform Builder to do. Think of it like talking to your smartphone. You can tell your smartphone to do certain stuff in the same way you can tell Platform Builder to do certain stuff. One of the ways that you can talk to Platform Builder through commands is now in custom items. We've been able to tell Platform Builder to do stuff already, like change the health and the max hearts, the lives, the ammo. You can do just about any of this in commands, plus a whole lot more. For instance, I could make the lives equal to 5, which is something that you can do easily with this action right here. But one thing that I can also do is I could divide it by 5. I could multiply by 5 using the uh, the star button. Uh, this is just a taste of some of the things that you can do in commands. Let me back up a little bit and show you how this is um, divvied up. So a command in Platform Builder is basically split into three parts. The first part is the command itself. Uh, this is what you want to change. In this instance, we want to change the lives. The second part of a command is the operator. This is how you want to change it. In this example, we are going to multiply the lives. The final part is the value. Uh, this is what you want to do, uh, what you want to change it to. So we want to multiply lives by 5. We have the command, the operator, the value. Lives multiply by equals 5. We can change the maximum hearts uh, to, let's say, we'll make it become 4. No matter where it is, it's going to now be 4 when we reach this item. There's so much more you can do, though, than just some of these basic um, character uh, status things. For instance, we can change the background. I can say that... Uh, Whoops, background equals a different background. For instance, uh, hills two. Okay, I could make it snow. If I say snow equals true, I could make it rain. Rain equals true. I could shake the screen even. Whoops, all different sorts of commands that you can call that will change your game. As you may have noticed, not all of these commands have all three parts. They don't all have the command, the operator, and the value. Some of them uh, don't need all of that. For instance, shake screen. This is just a command, but I don't need an operator or a value. I could actually use one. I could make the screen shake for four seconds by doing that. But if I just say shake screen, it, it's going to shake the screen for half a second. Um, there's other, like... Uh, if I want to disable characters, that's a simple command that doesn't use an operator or value. Just write disable characters. Uh, that's good for cutscenes. We'll talk about that later. Anyway, so it's going to do all these sorts of things when I pick up this item now. So let's take a look at that. Oh, oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, one thing that's very useful in Platform Builder commands is if you misspell something and you right click on your command prompt, it's going to tell you what's wrong. In this instance, it's like, I don't know what this is. What's that? Oh, I misspelled it. OK, do that. And then right click again. No problems have been detected. Hooray, it doesn't work perfectly, but it, it does a good job just looking over um, how, you, uh, how you've written out your commands. You also have the help button. And what this does is it opens up a web page, theplatformbuilder.com slash command dash prompt. Let, let me show that for you right here. Uh, this is part of the Platform Builder website, and it is a full documentation of all the different commands that you have on Platform Builder and how to use it. 
We've noticed here, for instance, the command lives, the operator, any. We could multiply, equals, divide, plus uh, the value is a number, lives multiplied equal 3. Uh, here's an example, lives equals 5. Here's a description of what it does. It tells you all this sort of stuff for every command. There are well over 150 commands for you to play around with in Platform Builder. Uh, so take advantage of that. I spent a long time on that, um, and uh, I think you will enjoy doing all this sort of stuff. All right, so let's hit OK, go back, and test it out. Oh, I need to lay down the item. Oops, not you. Custom items, item one, right there. It's going to run all those commands for me. Max hearts has been increased. We shook the screen a little bit. It's snowing, it's raining, the background changed, all those sorts of things. Commands can be called from more places than just your items. For instance, I can call commands right at the start of a uh, of, of an area right here. So right at the very beginning, I can call commands. Let me give you an example of this. Um, there's special invisible blocks, which are spawn points. And this is a point that you can lay down in advance, which allows you to tell where you want to create stuff using commands. So I need a spawn ID. It doesn't matter what I write here. Let's just do SPWN. And I want to create an enemy at this point using a command. Let's find out what enemy I want to do. Uh, if I go to custom enemies, let's go to the grouper. His ID is three. Okay, so let's remember that. Back here, command input from the area settings. These are the commands which will run right at the very beginning of the area. I want to create enemy 3. This is my special grouper. And I want to do it at the command, at the, uh, the invisible block with the spawn ID of SPWN. Okay. Let's try it out. And there he is, right at the beginning, running right to me. The nice thing is about these blocks is you can lay down multiple spawn points and they can have the same ID. For instance, I can I can have another one that has SPWN and it's going to just create an enemy at both of these spawn points now. See that? But if I have a block which uh, has a different ID, like, uh, I don't know, spawn 2, it's going to create it at SPWN according to the command, but not here because that has a different ID. If I wanted to create something from this point, I would need to actually call the correct spawn ID, which is that. See? Test it out. All right, we've spent enough time with all this. Point being is there's a whole lot you can do with commands, and there are special things in your game that allow you to spawn items. I wanted to show you that because it's a little more complicated than some of the other commands in Platform Builder. Let's move ahead to talk about timelines real quick. Timelines are a sequence of commands that are called across some period of time. I have a timeline in the example file uh, for you that you can look at, and I use it to create a cutscene at the very beginning of the example file. Let's take a look at that real quick. When I began, it starts showing some text at the top. We have a different background. The screen moves down, it pauses, the character runs in, and he starts talking to you. All of this is done through commands over a period of time, and I'm able to do all that by putting commands inside a timeline. So if I go to game setup, we have timelines here. This is my timeline, and here are all the different commands. This hides the characters, uh, disables him so I can't move. It hides the HUD, which is the um, heads up display, like your status bars and things like that. A little bit more startup. Here's the uh, text that appears at the top, platform builder example file. The music, the background changes. Um, and then the view goes down, and then the view stops going down, and now the NPC runs in, and all of this happens here at this point in time. I can change the time by clicking and dragging to the right or to the left. See that? I forgot where it was. Was it at 5? I can also use this to sort of fine-tune. This is useful if you want to shift everything. For instance, I want all of these messages to happen later. I can control... Uh, hold down shift as I just move all that and I can click and drag and move all of it over for me wherever I want to place that. 
Okay, so those are just a few things that you can do, and as you can see, there's all different sorts of stuff that you can do to create cutscenes, and there's other things you can do with timelines also. You can create a looping timeline that, for instance, constantly depletes your health if you want to make a game very difficult for you, or you could uh, have a timeline which creates a moving view that changes direction over the course of the uh, over the course of your area. Different sorts of stuff that will be very useful for you as you create your games. All right, um, this timeline ID is one. Uh, if I create a different timeline, you know, multiple ones are all going to have their own ID, just like every new item has its own ID, every new enemy has its own ID, and you find that up here at the top. Uh, this plugger is ID 6. You need to know these sorts of things because you might need to call them in commands. I already showed you about spawning enemies. Um, when I move the NPC, I needed to know the NPC that I was talking to so that I move the correct thing. Uh, stuff like that. NPCs are only available in Platform Builder Pro, so if you don't have that, you won't know quite what that is. But anyway, um, I start this timeline by going here at the very beginning. I run a timeline. Timeline equals one. That's why it goes right away when I start testing the game. A few other things, just real useful. I want to show you a nice trick in timelines. For instance, there might be a spot in the timeline where you want to be very precise. Let's say I go to this timeline and I want my NPC to jump right after he runs in. So let's go here at uh, stop view and let's change the area speed down to two. This means that the area is going to have a frame rate of two frames per second, which is extraordinarily slow. And I'm going to go here and turn on test mode what this does is it displays where you're at in the timeline and also makes invisible things visible. So the invisible block is visible now. We also see that we are in our timeline here. It flashes yellow every time a command is run in our timeline. And now it's slowed down a whole lot because I changed the area speed to only two frames per second. And at this point our NPC is running in real slowly and I want him to jump right, right now at 5.9. So let's get out of this. And let's go back to games, game setup, timelines uh, here. First thing I want to do is I want to get rid of this. And I want to insert, what was that, 5.9, I think? So let's do that, make it 5.9. NP, NPC 4 is the NPC I'm working with. And I want him to jump. Good, it, it's going to work. Hopefully. Commands are not case sensitive, so you don't need to worry about that. They're also not space sensitive. Oh, there he is. He jumped just where I wanted him, wanted him to jump. Um, and there's a lot of different ways you can say stuff in commands. So it's very simple. Again, it's like talking to your phone. Even if you're not quite on target, it might still understand what you're trying to say. Uh, so you can experiment with that. And of course, all those commands that are available for you on the website. Uh, there's a lot to be explored and a lot of fun to be had as you play around with commands and timelines. Thank you so much and uh, I will see you in a later tutorial.